Dr. Afia Siddiqui was born on March 2, 1972 in Karachi, Pakistan. Her father, Muhammad Siddiqui, was a UK-trained doctor, and her mother, Ismat, is a housewife. Afia moved to Texas in 1990, where her brother was living, and spent a year at the University of Houston, and then transferred to Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Her fellow students say she was a quiet, studious woman devoted to her religious beliefs. During her time at MIT, she joined the Campus Muslim Students Association and was actively involved in teaching Islam to non-Muslims in order to portray real Islam for them and to invite them to Islam. She became part of an exclusive club of those who have memorized the entire Quran. What I am saying is simply that a woman is not an unpaid slave. According to the Prophet Muhammad, she is the queen of her house. And not only that, she is also given permission to go out. And not only that, she is given respect, protection and dignity. Things which no other society, especially what the West has not given her. The hijab is not a restriction. It allows a woman to be judged by her content, not by her packaging. After graduating, she married a medical student. Experiencing the difficulty of living as Muslims in the United States after 9-11, Afia and her husband returned to Pakistan. Even though they had three children together, their marriage ended in divorce. As a result, she stayed in her mother's house. After a while, she went back to the U.S. to look for a job, but ended up returning to Pakistan. On March 23, 2003, Afia and her three children disappeared, and the following day, Pakistani papers mentioned reports about a woman who had been taken into custody because of terrorism. She claims that she was kidnapped among with her three kids by the Pakistani intelligence service and detained in different secret prisons for five years, during which time she was repeatedly abused, tortured, and raped. Her eldest son was released about six years later in September 2009 and her daughter was sent to her grandmother's house in April 2010 and being away for about seven years, the family couldn't identify her by appearance, but the DNA tests matched her brother's. Uh, you know, her detention has been illegal because even uh, if you go by the American laws, it is not permitted the way she has been kept and uh, the way her children were treated. So she should be immediately returned to Pakistan and there is a complete consensus right, left and center. Her own trial began on 19th of January 2010 in a Manhattan federal courtroom and lasted for two weeks. On February 3, 2010, she was convicted and found guilty on five counts of various charges, but not terrorism. Though it is unexplained how a frail and weak woman could confront three U.S. Army officers and two FBI agents managed to snatch a rifle and open fire on them. Afia was sentenced to 86 years in prison on September 23, 2010. She is serving in the Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. She will be released in 2094 if she is still alive when she will be 122 years old. Afia Siddiqui was not taken because she was a terrorist, brothers and sisters. She was taken because she's a neuroscientist. She was taken because she is an activist. Some of you may not know this, but for five, six, seven years before she was taken, she was campaigning for the Bosnians. She was campaigning for justice in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and for our brothers and sisters everywhere. She is one of the best of us.